and the position of the point is described by x, y and z in space. Therefore, they are referred to, they are referred to as spatial coordinates. Therefore, they are referred to as spatial coordinates. Now, if it is a particle or an object which is at rest, also referred to as stationary, stationary in the other. Then you need only x, y and z to define, to define its position. But if you are not talking about this particle at rest, instead you are talking about the particle in motion. If it is a particle which is in motion, it requires time coordinate also. It requires time coordinate also to describe its position. It requires also this. That means, that means this moving particle, a particle which is in motion is a moving particle. So a moving particle requires space coordinates given by x, y, z, that is spatial. It also requires what is known as very important a time coordinate. It also requires what is known as a time coordinate. So that means you require that means what you require is what is known as space and time coordinates. You require space as well as time coordinates designated by x, y, z and t. Represented by x, y, z, t and this is known as Four vector mechanism. Four vector mechanism. The four vectors are, as you already have seen, it is both space as well as time. Now, now what we need now is uh, a frame of reference. A frame of a reference is needed. Why do you need a frame of reference? You need a frame of reference with respect to which you need this. You need frame of reference because with respect to which All the parameters required to describe all the parameters required to describe the position can be measured. 
So this frame of reference, this frame of reference what we are talking about is different is different for a particle at rest that is what is meant by particle at rest it is a stationary particle stationary one and for a particle which is moving So that means we have here two frames of reference. That means we have two frames of reference. One is known as laboratory frame of reference. The other one is moving frame. I will term it little later in a by a different name. For the present you understand that one is stationary, one is laboratory frame. One is moving frame, one is stationary frame. This laboratory frame is the frame which is also known as at rest. Moving frame is the one which moves along with the particle. One familiar example which you are already familiar with, let me take a platform. A moving train and a platform example which you are all familiar with. Okay. This is, let us say that this is a platform, railway platform and let us say that this is your train, this is your train. If the train is moving, let us say to the right, if the train is moving to the right, it appears as though you all know that the platform is moving to the left. This is stationary. So with respect to this stationary platform, the train is to the right. With respect to the person sitting in the train, with respect to the person who is sitting in the train, For a person who is sitting in the train, it looks as though the platform is moving to the left. So this is one frame of reference known as laboratory frame of reference. This is very important for you to observe. This is stationary or at rest with respect to what? With respect to passenger in a train. But if you consider that this laboratory is located on the surface of the earth, And you all know that, you all know, you have already seen Kepler's laws. What did we observe? You have sun at one of its foci and you have all the planets revolving round the sun. So if you are looking from, let us say, moon or sun, doesn't it mean that earth is moving? And this laboratory is fixed on the surface of the moon. 
so it appears as though as though that the lab is moving what does it imply in this example platform also is moving on earth on the surface of the earth as viewed as viewed from the moon or any other planet or any other planet so therefore what is it that we are doing we have therefore different frames of reference okay and suppose a train is moving in this direction one train one the other train is moving in this direction so both are in what is known as relative motion to each other so for him this is going in this direction let us say this is south and this is north so train 1 is heading towards north train 2 is heading towards south but for a person sitting in the train 2 it looks as though what does it look he is since it's moving it's going in this direction for this person this is moving in the other direction i think now you have got some idea about the frame of reference so in the in view of this we have one is stationary then we have this moving object is also known as rotating frame of reference that is the frame of reference which is moving that is a frame of reference it is moving now this is again divided into this is again divided into two types they are referred to as one inertial frame of reference inertial frames of reference the other one is non inertial frame of reference what are they let us understand them the inertial frame of reference as you say this is the reference frame which is at rest or moving with it is either at rest or it is moving with uniform velocity that means to say that the law of inertia holds good here law of laws of inertia let us say laws of inertia hold good what is meant by law of inertia nothing but newton's laws so that means to say that newton's laws newton's laws of motion hold good so newton's laws of motion hold good in this frame this is also referred to as your laboratory frame the second one is non inertial frame of reference let us try to understand what it means here this is also referred to as rotating frame of reference this is also referred to as rotating frame of reference since it is rotating newton's laws are not valid newton's laws of motion are not valid
and because they are not valid in addition to in addition to real forces we also have what is known as which is not real is referred to as what is it referred to as fictitious forces these fictitious forces also do exist in non inertial frame of reference so what examples can you give of these fictitious forces one is a centrifugal force one is a centrifugal force and the examples that you can think of are one centrifugal force centrifugal force the second one is coriolis force these two are the examples of your fictitious forces so now draw a three dimensional coordinate system draw a three dimensional coordinate system i think all of you can draw the three coordinate system excuse me ma'am yes Ma'am, roll number fifteen. Deepthi, she is unable to join the class. Roll number fifteen. One second. Ah, yes, I am admitting. Thank you, ma'am. Ah, anyone else? Just prompt me. Okay. I'm back to my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. draw three dimensional three dimensional coordinate system this is your three dimensional coordinate system okay so now let us see that let us say that this is your x this is your y this is your z and this frame is referred to as s this frame is referred to as s which is stationary now draw one more draw one more three dimensional one you are able to see let me draw it with a different color mm, let me take you uh, let me take this way This is my x dash. 
this is my y dash this is my z dash and this is measured with respect to s prime frame and for all this this is the origin let us imagine that this is s prime frame is moving with the velocity omega so s prime is rotating with omega what is omega that's nothing but angular velocity Can I proceed? Ma'am, once you scroll it down, ma'am. Down. Tell me when you are ready. And it is moving in which direction? It is moving in. Anti-clockwise direction. It's moving in anti-clockwise direction. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So now I'll proceed. Now this is important. that in order to there should be some relation between there should be a relation between the two measurements that are carried in these two frames of reference there should be a relation now how do you get this relation there is a relation which you will uh, come to know about it little later for the present you take it that d by dt this is very important relation d by dt is equal to d prime by dt plus omega cross this where where this is with reference to s prime this is with reference to s prime term. and it is giving you what is known as a differential operator and what you write in the brackets is referred to as arguments are also known as variables like your del operator you have a del operator no something similar to that where omega is this so any operator in s frame is given by an operator in s prime frame plus omega cross r and if you operate it on displacement if you operate this on displacement vector r what do you get you get dr by dt is equal to d dash r by dt plus omega cross r this is what you get 
and what will you write this as? You will write this as v is equal to v dash plus omega cross r. So let's call this as your equation number 2 and your first equation is this. Is it understandable? I am just taking dr by dt is v, no? So therefore I am using that relation. Where v is a velocity in S prime, v prime is a velocity in the S dash frame. Differentiate this once again. Differentiating equation 2 again with respect to time again with respect to time what do you get? We get d as you can see dv by dt is equal to d dash by dt v dash plus plus what do you get? Omega cross V. In place of R now it is V. And which can be written as A is equal to what do you write this as? Ah, this is one thing important here. You will write this as A. Now but what is V dash? D dash I am sorry D dash this is V only. dv see how did we substitute in the operator in place of this we substituted r so here also we substitute r here also we substitute r similarly when you are differentiating with respect to v it is dv by dt is equal to d dash v by dt plus omega cross v this is v not r okay so now this is acceleration but what is v from equation 2 from your equation 2 Substituting equation 2, what do you get? You get this as d dash by dt and in place of v, we will write it as v dash plus omega cross r plus omega cross once again in place of v same thing you will write omega cross v prime plus omega cross r now simplifying this this is nothing but dv by dt so a which is equal to dv by dt is equal to differential of this. How do you write this as d dash d dash v dash by dt plus derivative of this. So d dash omega by dt cross r plus Omega is a constant velocity. This can be taken out. D dash by dt r plus omega cross v plus omega cross omega cross r. This is multiplication distributed over addition. Now, you can write this as, now very important thing, we say, what did we say? That it is moving with constant angular velocity. The planet is moving with a constant angular velocity and hence d omega by dt is 0.
substituting that we get a relation that dv by dt is equal to this is dv by dt we are able to see it dv by dt is equal to d dash by dt plus this is the d o d uh, d d dash omega by cross r okay plus omega cross there is a cross product again there is a cross here there is a cross here so what you have here is omega cross d dash r by dt plus omega cross v plus omega cross omega cross r which can be further written as this is nothing but acceleration so acceleration a is equal to a dash plus this is nothing but dr by dt is nothing but v so here what do you have one omega cross v plus another omega cross v so can i write it as 2 omega cross v plus omega cross omega cross r so this is acceleration in stationary frame this is the acceleration in which frame a rotating or a moving frame therefore this is nothing but your omega square r which is nothing but what force is this which you are already familiar with this is your centrifugal force centrifugal acceleration basically force comes little later for the present this is i'll talk about the acceleration uh, force later as of now this is called as centrifugal acceleration and this is your the next row force and that is your coriolis acceleration this is your coriolis acceleration so if you multiply on both sides with m multiply on both sides with the mass m what do you get you get it as f in s frame is equal to m a minus 2 m omega cross d dash minus m what am i writing this is s prime this is in s prime so m into what else do you get uh, omega cross omega cross r see what i have done is one step ahead multiply on both sides with mass this entire thing also with mass and i am taking this on to the left hand side so force in s prime frame will is equal to fa minus this minus this so that is what exactly i have written here so let's call this as maybe i think equation number 3 and hence this is your coriolis force m omega square r is your centrifugal force i told you in a rotating frame of reference you have two uh frame two forces and they are referred to as fictitious forces and we have established that there are two forces which are acting i'll show you a video which i already showed i don't know how many of you could see it so the effects of these 
Coriolis is force or one. Direction of winds. It's not trade, it is tried winds. There's a mistake in the book. It's not trade, it is tide. Tides. Second is wall pools. Where do you see whirlpools? In the sea. Whirlpools in the sea. Then you have river flowing. You have two beds on either side, river beds. They undergo erosion. So what I feel is, it is better you watch these videos which are shared on your uh, Google Classroom. You will get North East monsoon, South West monsoon also based on the same relation. I think some of you must have seen, but doesn't matter. Together, let us see these videos. And these are the videos which are posted by the National Geographic on YouTube. I want all of you to watch this. Those who could not see it on your mobiles, doesn't matter. Now you can see those things. National Geographic is very nice. First you try watching that. One second, it's rendering. This is a symbol. The yellow symbol, what you are seeing is National Geography.
so what's happening you are able to make out once it is at stationary they are all able to see this once the frame is rotating the man there in that he started rotating so once it is rotated he is not able to see this this is another video maybe this is better you just try this is uh, One second, girls. Uh, I think it's loading. Once it loads, you can see. This is, I think, better. Just try this. Just keep watching. Then I'll explain. prompt me are you able to see and hear one of you please prompt me ma'am we can see but we cannot listen the audio audio is giving me a problem too i just see just see So he is trying. Okay, let me give you. Initially, they are able to throw the ball at each other, and this man is now making him rotate, making them rotate. So when they rotate, what happens? The ball actually moves in. Just see. It doesn't. Uh, if a girl is throwing the ball, it doesn't reach the boy. It goes into the right direction. Similarly, the boy when he throws, it goes onto the left. So it's like you know, from the north, the winds go. to the to the east side and from south they go on to the west so there is the rotation of the earth is from west to east okay and these north in northward north, north uh, hemisphere from north hemisphere when they are going to the southern hemisphere they will be drifted to the right and from south they will be drifted to the left to the west that is why we have southwest monsoons coming land breezes and sea breezes there is a difference you just see that He is talking about that rotation of the Earth. this is a very important concept i'll try to present it from the other are examples there wonderful examples i will try presenting from the other system just a minute
these are all videos they take a long time screen is coming no you are able to see the screen right yes ma'am uh, but it's not allowing me national geographic so it's going to to sign up okay let's come back it's not allowing me i'll see if i can get to two more minutes i have time i'll just show you interesting and you know If you've ever watched the news during, if you've ever watched the news during a hurricane during a hurricane or winter time or winter Easter you've probably noticed you've probably noticed a storm that they spin over time as they travel in over time in the northern they hemisphere they spin in the northern hemisphere they spin but if you were watching a storm in the southern but if you were watching a storm you'd see it spinning in the southern hemisphere you'd see it spinning why do storms spin in different directions storms spin in different directions depending on their location and why do they spin in the first place a storm's rotation is due to something called the coriolis effect which is a phenomenon that causes fluids like water and air to curve as they travel across or, or above are you able to see no okay i'll see in the next class otherwise it's got stuck the video okay okay with this uh, i think almost it is over um, i actually shared my class notes also with you you can now leave girls thank you your airplane your directly, directly, directly northward. Directly northward. You, might you might think land it would land north. straight north maybe somewhere, maybe in, somewhere nebraska. in nebraska but texas, but texas is actually, actually spinning, spinning around, around axis, axis faster, faster than, than nebraska, nebraska is. is because because